Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from Shomu's Biology. In today's lecture, we are going to talk about an experiment that is known as pulse chase experiment. Okay, what is pulse chase experiment? We'll be talking about that. Actually, it'll be a series of video lectures where we discuss about different experiments uh, related to the DNA, uh, the proteins inside the cell. Pulse chase experiment is a kind of experiment which is performed to understand and find out the dynamic nature of macromolecules inside the cell. Now the macromolecules can be DNA, it can be RNA or it can be proteins. The amount of DNA, RNA and proteins present at a given time in a cell can be measured with the help of pulse chase experiment. Okay. Now this experiment has two important segments to it, two important segments to it. One is the pulse part and then second part is the chase part. It is made with these two components, pulse and chase. And as I mentioned, the experiment is performed uh, to know the dynamic, sorry, it should be dynamicity, or I can say dynamicity or dynamic nature of macromolecules like DNA, RNA or proteins in a cell at a given point of time. For example, if I talk about a cell, the cell is not undergoing any DNA replication. So pre-replication stage, there are few proteins, X, Y, Z, whatever things are present there. But uh, right the moment when the cell is ready for the DNA replication, they need uh, some more protein, let's say B, C, some more proteins are added, extra proteins are prepared, which will be required to continue with the process of uh, the DNA replication. And then <clears throat> during this time after the DNA replication, few proteins will be left and most of the proteins are degraded because their jobs are done. So you can see that a single cell, if we study a single cell at different time frame, this is time frame number one, this is time frame number two and this is time frame number three. In these different time frames, the different overall protein makeup inside the cell is not the same, it is different. So let's, as I mentioned that this is the replication stage, this is the pre-replication stage and this is the post-replication stage. So if we are measuring the amount and the types of protein that are present in pre-replication stage and replication stage and post-replication stage, those are different. They are not the same, they are different. And with the different time frame, we can measure them with this different time frame or changing time frame that we can clearly see here. Now, how to understand, how to know that the protein makeup inside the cell can alter from different time frame in a cell. And this thing happens not only to the proteins, but also to the DNA and the RNA. So, the total proteins that are present in a cell at a given time, the idea of the whole proteins that are out there, right? So, similarly, if, they are, if you are looking at RNA transcripts made from the DNA at a given time point in a cell, that is known as transcriptome. This is known as the proteome. So, for this transcriptome and proteome analysis, we need to use pulse chase experiment. Because pulse chase experiment will help us to understand how exactly one particular protein behaves uh, at different time frame of a cellular growth and progression or for different DNA and RNA, the modifications that are there. That is the purpose of pulse chase experiment. Now let's come back to this field. When I am talking about the pulse chase experiment, how it is done, why it is done, we know that. Now let's see how it is done. See, I told you that it has two different components, pulse part, which is the first part of the experiment, then chase part, which is the second part of this experiment. Okay. So the experiment is very straightforward. In this experiment, we need dye to tag along with these macromolecules. Okay. So this is a requirement of it. So if I write the requirement of this uh, experiment, we need uh, tags. Now the dye or tag that we say, the tag can be radio radioactive or it can be fluorescent dye. It can be radioactive 
टैग और फ्लोरसेंट डाई रेडियो एक्टिव मॉलिक्यूल्स और फ्लोरसेंट डाई आइदर ऑफ देम कैन एक्ट एज अ टैग एंड द सेकेंड थिंग वी नीड इज अ मेजरमेंट डिवाइस फॉर द रेडियो एक्टिविटी और फ्लोरसेंस ओके सो रेडियो एक्टिविटी और फ्लोरसेंस मेजरिंग दिस इज समथिंग दैट वी रिक्वायर for that we need quantitative measurement not qualitative we need quantitative measurement if there is a radioactivity then how much radioactivity if there is a fluorescence then how much fluorescence we need to measure the quantity okay these are the requirement so we know the requirements now we have the requirements ready now let's talk about the exact experiment and how it is done so let's talk about the proteins because we are focused on proteins although the same experiment can be done for the dna as well as for the rna but let's focus to the proteins here because that's what we are taking as an example here so in proteins what we need to do is basically what we'll do is first example say again this is the cell and this is our target protein let's say we want to know how much or how much amount of this protein let's say the protein x is generated in the cell pre replication during replication and post replication we choose three time frames so in pre replication time frame we are trying to see it so how exactly we will see it let's say this x protein is present let's say two two x proteins are present before replication although it is totally hypothetical there are a huge number of proteins present but let's consider two because it's easy to draw here so two proteins that we are visualizing pre replication stage here and to this protein we can attach the very first thing is the pulse now what is a pulse a pulse is a process of adding or tagging a uh, uh, adding a tag either it can be radioactive tag or fluorescent tag okay let's imagine that we are adding a fluorescent dye to it so fluorescent dye is added that is in the red dot the fluorescent dye is added to both the x proteins before replication stage so pulsing is done pulsing is nothing but attachment of a tag it can be fluorescent tag or it can be radioactive tag attachment of this tag to the protein uh, of target that we are checking at a given point of the cell so tagging is done pulse is done now comes to the chase part what is the chase part in the chase part so in the pulse part we make sure that whatever our target protein is is completely tagged completely tagged so we make sure that whatever number of x proteins are present in the cell are tagged so we expose that cell those proteins to our fluorescent tag or radioactive dye till a time frame until all the proteins get tagged once the tagging is done once the pulse is done next comes the chase part now in the chase part what we need to see what we need to see is the number of proteins varying from pre to replication replication to post replication phase and this is what we are going to see again in the replication stage and then the post replication stage and what is happening Uh, to these proteins that we are going to see now what happen is that there are different outcomes possible now what is the outcome here in the chase part we are no longer providing them with the fluorescent dye or radioactive molecules we allow them to recover from it right so we take the cell at a given time frame we put them we tag them with the fluorescent dye once it's done the fluorescent dye is attached to the target protein it's done then we don't have any fluorescent dye tag to it now whatever tagging is done it is done now we need to see what happens to this tagged proteins okay and what we can clearly see is that at this moment there are multiple outcomes let's say these proteins are stable and these proteins will remain throughout the replication even after the replication if that is the case in the chase process naturally there no tagging so the amount of radioactivity or fluorescence should be reduced slowly but in this case case if it remains the same even after the replicate replication phase and post replication phase we can tell one thing is that so uh, if i draw this okay let's say this and uh, the same fluorescent tags are visible so same amount of fluorescence is visible there might be little loss very little loss next to uh, zero so we can ignore that but this fluorescence remains the same if, if fluorescence remains the same we can comment on this protein is that this protein is incredibly stable before during and after 
the DNA replication. This is something we can tell. At this moment, this is something we can tell. That's one comment. Now, what else can happen is that this protein, although it is present pre-replication, but let's say this protein is more required during the replication. So, if you require more of these proteins during the replication, so more and more these proteins will be prepared during replication. So, what will happen is that the net fluorescence here will drop because all the proteins that are out there, uh, the, the concentrated version of that that is out there. But now, among all the other proteins, the same protein, we take out that protein, the amount will be huge, but the percentage of the fluorescence coming out from that huge amount of the protein will be altered. Okay, that is one thing. One other thing can happen is that these proteins are only a prerequisite for the DNA replication. So, they require just before the DNA replication. Now, right from the DNA replication, we no longer need these proteins. So, another possibility is that these proteins will be destroyed during the time of DNA, replica uh, DNA replication. These proteins are destroyed. So, as a result of which, what we can see is that loss of the fluorescence, significant loss of the fluorescence. So, uh, if we check the graph, the fluorescence will drop. So, we have a fluorescence, it will drop suddenly. So, this is the pre-replication, this is replication, this is post-replication. So, it is a gradual drop that is visible or it can be a sudden drop like this. Okay? So, both of this is possible. So, by looking at the data, so let us say here also, we do not have these proteins. We have some other proteins coming up here. We have not tagged those proteins, right? So, but the other proteins coming out here. So, by tagging this particular protein X, if you found the data that before replication, the fluorescence, we fixed a fluorescence value that is the control, the background value. And then during the replication, the proteins are degraded because their function is no longer required. So, the fluorescence drastically drops. So, once the fluorescence drastically drops, that is the chase part of the experiment. So, chase is when we find out the change in fluorescence or change in radioactivity which is tagged in the pulse part of the experiment. So, in the chase, we find out whether a protein or a DNA or RNA becomes stable, remains stable in different time frame of the cellular growth or not. So, for cell functioning, these macromolecules dynamic nature can be interpreted with the help of this pulse chase experiment. That is all regarding pulse chase experiment and remember how to measure the fluorescence. We have the measuring devices, we have the radioactivity measuring device or fluorescence measuring device which will quantitatively, remember quantitatively quantitatively measure the fluorescence, not only qualitatively, quantitatively they may measure the fluorescence from there. Okay? That is pulse chase experiment to you and I believe I have a clear idea regarding this experiment. Now, there are graphs you might get. So, again this is uh, the time. Remember in this graph what we can say we have the time in the x axis and the fluorescence or radioactivity in the y axis. You can see that the fluorescence is first prepared due, due to the pulse and this is the chase part. In the chase part, the fluorescence will definitely drop, but how exactly it is modifying, how exactly it is changing uh, will help us to understand the dynamic nature of the macromolecules like DNA, RNA and proteins inside the cell. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and colleagues and watch all the lectures from this experiment series. There are these five lectures. So, this one is done. Then we have three more lectures. Griffith's experiment. We have uh, Avery MacLeod McCarthy experiment. And uh, we have Hershey Chase experiment. So, also watch those lectures. It will be very, very clear in your head. If you like the video, subscribe. Thank you. Bye.